On the morning of June 20th, 2011, the world lost a very special person, and we lost our brother. Uh, we wanted to make this tribute as a celebration of his life, but also we wanted to make it to let you know why we loved him so much and why we're going to miss him. Police are investigating the cause of a fiery car crash that killed two people, including Ryan Dunn, one of the stars of the popular MTV show Jackass. According to police, 34-year-old Ryan Dunn was speeding over 100 miles an hour when he crashed into this wooded embankment. Dunn's car caught fire, the impact and flames killing him and fellow passenger Zach Hartwell. Ryan was real. You know, he was, he didn't put on some character to be on TV. He, he was always himself. Dunn and I were hands down best friends. Ever since he moved to Westchester, we've pretty much been attached at the hip. He was just the sweetest guy. You know, he had so much love about him. He made us smarter, he made us funnier, he made us sweeter. He brought a lot of love to the group. He looked like everybody's best friend, he was. He was the nicest, nicest guy that you would ever want to know. He never wanted people to be upset. He just wanted everything to be, you know, let's, let's all laugh for a while. Ryan was born June 11th, 1977. We lived in southern Medina County, and then we moved to Brecksville when he was two years old. He smiled all the time, even as a little baby. And as he got older, he, he was very mischievous. He hated school from day one, and I think that's probably what started him off. He just did not like school, and he cried a lot. So he got the nickname Crying Ryan. According to my other two children, it was because I babied him, and that's why he cried. But of course, I wouldn't admit to that. <laughs> he never was limited by reality. If he thought it'd make you laugh and entertain you by telling you he jumped off of the balcony and you know landed on a goose and rode around the lake, that's what that's what you're gonna get. He was happiest whenever he could make anybody smile or laugh. That's all he ever wanted, and it was from as early on as I can remember that was his motivation. And then we went to Westchester when he was 16, and he loved Westchester as soon as he got there. Oh, there, Sam. I met Ryan when I was 12 years old. He came from Cleveland, Ohio. He went to East High School with me, my brother, Brandon DiCamello, Chris Rabb, and we just kind of hit it off right away. And uh, we started this really terrible band called Soul Roach. <laughs> God, I can't believe I'm saying that. It's pure excitement here at Soul Roach City. Let's take a picture of the shirt. Just stand up. Let's see the shirt. That is a soul roach. I started this band with some guys from Westchester, and uh, we didn't have a singer, and he's like, I'll sing. And I was like, oh, can you sing? He's like, no. <laughs> but I don't know. He just was such a character that he made like a good front man in a band, you know? Bam here is my backup singer. He's a professional Bart. skateboarder, and he's cool. So we got accepted to the Battle of the Bands at East High School, and we came in last. <laughs> so yeah, Don got to the school, met Bam and Jess, and was immediately in trouble, filming all kinds of stuff in the bathroom. Take 402. Actually, they were over at the school more when the school was closed than when the school was open. Bam kind of pushed the, you know, filming things and uh, we were all just friends. Yeah, Gerald, yeah, Gerald was calling me pause. How he fit up there? And then it kind of just drifted into like doing dumb stuff to 
kind of amuse ourselves. As the years went on, we realized that why not just put the stuff out on a video since everybody's asking for it anyway. And that's when uh, CKY started. Don knew that I was working on a video called CKY and he was like the prime time go-to guy. He, he just wanted to be in the video so bad. So he jumped off this building into this bush. At that point, I knew that <laughs> He's the, the main guy to go to when you want to get footage. <laughs> what do you think would happen if we put that down and you just biked off of it, like, moving? I don't know. We can find out. <laughs> I just remember he was always the first one to do, like, somebody would come up with the craziest idea, like, drive this bike off the church into this bush. And everyone's like, dude, no way. And he'd be the one to do it, always, you know? He's, like, fearless. <laughs> I had no problem, like, you know, crapping myself or, or doing the gay rollerblading, but uh, as when it came to, like, jumping off roofs and riding bikes or whatever he was doing, it was like, he just would go for it. One of the first things I remember seeing him do, well, actually, he didn't do anything. He was sleeping. Congratulations. He was sleeping and, and uh, D. Camillo rubbed poop in his face. <laughs> he did great in that. He woke me up by putting on my face. I can just get even or something. I'm going to kick him in the face. I'm no, going to break his nose. Just dump jelly on him or something. Jelly? <laughs> <laughs> on my face, and you're talking about jelly. We waited for D. Kamel to go to sleep. <laughs> sure enough, <laughs> he goes up and pisses right in his mouth. He got like maybe a half a gallon of good piss in his mouth. <laughs> When this whole thing started with the CKY movies, and then when Jackass came about, that that that's when he really started to blossom. Oh, my name's Rick. Rick, did I meet you before? Probably, no. but probably not. Ryan. I don't think you did. No. First time I met Ryan was when we went to Westchester to start filming the first season of Jackass. Yeah. <laughs> but I knew who he was just because I'd seen, you know, early CKY videos, and uh, I was already kind of a fan. You were there, Ryan. No. We go to Westchester to shoot with Bam, and we get introduced to Ryan, and we pretty much knew right away that we had a brand new ace in the hole. The first thing we shot on that trip was him jumping into the poo water, <laughs> the poo dive. Why not just jump in the toilet and swim? <laughs> I don't know. It makes him happy. So uh, how often do you jump in the poo stew? Uh, this would be my first time in an actual poo stew, but I dreamt of it. One of my favorite things about it was discovering Ryan's weird homemade prison tattoos in his underwear region. Look at these haggard tattoos! I ain't the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I'm no one knows. What is that? What is that? Is that weight training? You got to be tough. What does that mean? I don't know. How did the uh, poo dive come about? Uh, I'm void of any talent, and uh, I needed to make a living, so I jumped in. I'm Ryan Dodd. And this is poo diving. It's gonna be done, you gotta be tough. Dude, I blew that shot, you gotta do it again. So after Dunn uh, jumped in the waste treatment factory, <laughs> he reeked so bad that uh, everybody was allowed inside the house to eat dinner, but my mom made a table outside and he had to eat alone because he reeked too bad. To add fuel to the fire, they started throwing footballs at me. So I said, and enjoy my food that night, and I stunk. And it was awesome. I didn't shower after the poo dive for at least a week. I know that, and it could have been much longer. I can't remember the last time I showered. <laughs> oh, the barf here, dude. This sucks. No, he's a dirtbag. Like, I mean, not, not morally. But physically, he was just a filthy human being. It's pretty funny always seeing Dunn 
do something and get super dirty. We'd be done shooting for the day, and we'd everybody go back to the hotel or clean up, and we'd all go out. Dunn would be in the same shirt, same jeans, barely like wiped off the dirt or mud, whatever we were in, and be at dinner at the bar that, that same night. He usually smelled really bad. <laughs> he would not bathe. Hated water. It's not fair. Oh, Mr. Have a sweet smile. All the women like you. Ooh. People like me have to go around diving in the every day. Hey, man. Well, you got a tough job. Oh, look at me looking pretty everywhere I go. You gotta work with what you got. Let's go. He didn't shave. He didn't wash his hair. He didn't shower. I think we purposely wrote things to throw him in water just so we could get him clean. Go. The bungee launch, I hated that. And that was like 10 years ago. Imagine how much I hate it now. I've got 10 years to, 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 to marinate on hating water. And now here I am, back, getting tossed into water. It's a huge, big, disastrously annoying circle. Damn it. Another miserable water situation for Ryan was on number two. Basically, we put Ryan on the roof of a van on a pair of water skis, and then Preston was gonna drive the van and hit the brakes right when the van hit the water, and he's supposed to water ski across the, <laughs> the lake. How solid do you feel up there? Like, I don't know. I don't think I've ever done this before. <laughs> if Ryan Dunn doesn't get hurt on this one, this whole skit is riding on my badass intro. <laughs> <laughs> You know, not being a stunt driver and trained in any way, it stopped way too short. And he didn't skim, he just went straight down to his face. Into cement and muck and... <laughs> Why did that not make it? What happened? Ryan was mad because he, he took a major fall on that and it never got seen, so... Here's our chance to let the world see some of Ryan's beautiful art. Now it's time to rediscover the lost art of van surfing. Ryan Dunn will play the role of Teen Wolf, while Preston Lacey plays the role of his cool bro Styles. <laughs> oh, you f ass! You alright? You alright? Yeah, I'm alright, you. My God. Yeah, Ryan, that water really wasn't that deep. No. <laughs> you want to know where I landed? <laughs> yeah. He ate pure shit, and <laughs> I highly recommend to never do that, kids. Because <laughs> he got muffed up, didn't he? Yeah, he did. <laughs> You are not very good at skiing. You're not really good at anything. <laughs> You're not very good at skiing. I haven't found one thing I'm good at. <laughs> In the early days, just meeting Ryan, I was just trying to figure out how to write bits for him. So I was like, well, what are you good at? And he's like, oh, I like to BMX a lot. Get him! Show him who's captain! He already said he rode BMX. And then, like, further investigation, I, I found that, yeah, he does ride, but he doesn't really ride away from anything. <laughs> and he was... Very much into like going f for things that you know there was no way he was going to make it from the beginning, and it wasn't because he was so brave either. But he was just, you know, he was willing to accept what was going to happen to him. That's why we call you Dr. Kickass. Now hit it. <laughs> yeah, he was very graceful in his wipeouts. Not really, actually. <laughs> Now that I think about it, he, he slammed pretty hard. If we're trying to do a stunt and people keep landing it, 
<laughs> we were just sending Ryan <laughs> to, to finish it off. I think Bam was great at it the first time, and uh, now Dunn stepped in to uh, up the failure rate to an all-time high. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he ever landed anything except for on his face, <laughs> which worked for us. <laughs> if he wasn't pranking you or, or trying to get you while we were filming, then out, like outside of that, he was like the most genuine rad dude. <laughs> If Jackass is looking for a certain type, it's a guy that's just so willing to do something that he knows is going to fail, he knows it's going to hurt, and do it with such grace and style. Oh. He was the epitome of a Jackass, you know? What, uh, what have you been kind of dreading the most about shooting in the film? Like, what stunt were you kind of the most worried about before you did it? I put a toy car in my butt. Do you really have to ask me that? We were filming the first movie, and Steve-O was supposed to shove the car up his butt, but Steve-O had just told us that he's not gonna do it. Put it to this way, Bam, what's the point of being in a Hollywood movie if every mother that sees the Hollywood movie comes up to you and says, hey, saw you shove something up your ass. You're that dude who shoved the car up your ass. <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> Ryan Dunn walks in, I go, well, Steve-O just told us that he's not doing the car up the ass bit. And Ryan's like, well, someone's got to do it. And right then the light bulb went off my head. I'm like, Ryan, you're right. Someone does have to do it, buddy. I mean, it just has to be done. It's too good not to be done. I'll do it. I mean, and I want to. Don't think I'm crazy and I want to go get hurt or I want to shove things into my butt. I just know that it'll be funny, so I'm going to go do it. Now I'm lubing up. You can't see the car. The little toy car because I'm going to put it in my butt. <laughs> <laughs> he just did it. <laughs> like a champ, by the way. I mean, he was chilling with that thing in his butt for the whole day. And uh, it was just one camera and done, and I don't think anyone could have pulled that off like he did. Well, that's not part of you. That's something extra. I would have known if I ate that. No, you, you wouldn't be able to swap that. That's it's a car toy. Well, how did a car toy get there? Maybe you stuck it up your ass. I didn't stick anything up my ass. Butt x-ray was and probably still is the best thing we ever shot. He already knows that too many people. Whenever anyone asked, you know, who he was, if it came up in conversation, I'd say he's the one that's famous for shoving the car up his ass. Mm -hmm. And that was really, you know, that's the best way to describe him because that's what he always said. That's what sent him into the new echelon. I mean, to be honest, dude, whether I wish I did it or not, I didn't have the balls you had, dude, and that's all it takes, dude, to win. You know what? I think because, you know, Dunn got caught shoving that tiny Corvette up his butt. and I got uh, caught. <laughs> and everybody talks about it. So I'm like, well, <laughs> if everybody remembers that, then I'll do anal bead kite. And then ever since that, I'm like, branded on my ass. I don't care. Like... So I just have a lot of bits involving my ass simply because he got caught shoving a Corvette up his butt. So, you, so you're just admitting to stealing my thunder right here in front of me? A little bit, right here and now. Jesus. That's what you get, enough of the gruff. <laughs> Bam and Ryan always stayed so close. I was super good friends with Ryan, but they've always been super tight. Knoxville has prescription lotion, and that's all he uses. And I got it. But I got something else. Horse Where do you even get a horse From a horse, idiot. They had their own lives, but they just were so close. Really, really close. Really close. I'm not whipping your out. All right, we'll pull the fat up. Get up. I'm at it. You're at it? Couldn't even call him Frenzy. I'd call him, like... Big brother, little brother, and, and done being the big brother. Welcome to my Chester. Ah. Ah, damn it. It's so not right. <laughs> and not just Jackass, even through all the stuff they went through together, they they stayed close and remained friends, and that's that says a lot. Dunn and I were hands down best friends. Like, we went everywhere together. We flew everywhere together. We'd crack the most random jokes. We had the same sense of humor. He was my main man. <laughs>
<laughs> they were two best buds. And it's weird now that it's not like that anymore. When I first got to Westchester to do Viva La Bam, I was such an outsider. I didn't know Bam, I didn't know Don, I didn't know Deco or any of those guys. And they're such a tight-knit group. Um, they wanted nothing to do with me and the crew I was there with. Me and Don pushed <laughs> the producer's, producer's rental car into his rental apartment. <laughs> In my dream, I hear the sound of angels or sparkly miracle sounds. And as I open my eyes, the front end of my rental car was inside of the living room of my apartment. And the sound that I thought were angels was the sound of shards of glass falling from the door frame. <laughs> I'm so going to jail for that! $5,000 later, we settled it in court. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't necessarily the first day, but I felt like immediately over time, Dunn definitely tried to make a connection. And by the time I'd finished up uh, the very first season of Viva La Bam, I just felt like Dunn and I were best friends. Um, I mean, the beauty of Ryan was that he made everybody feel like they were his best friend. He was just that genuinely interested uh, in who you were and what you were about. And I think more than anything, when I when I think reflect back on meeting him for the first time on the home record set, is when he saw me for the first time, he just gave me a big hug, like we had been friends forever. I mean, treated everybody exactly the same. Like, I don't care if you're Johnny Knoxville or you know a lighting rigger or or whatever. Like every single person that that he talked to or hung out, he made them feel like, you know, they were they were best buds. <laughs> I've never seen Dunn guarded with people. We, we would be out in public and people, would, you know, always coming up to him. Like, they wanted autographers. He would sit there and chat with them forever. You know, he just loved talking to people. He's really open. And I, uh, I, I wish I was that open. I was, I was a fan first, you know, and... It's pretty rare to meet people and have them be as cool as he was. He truly was a cool dude. Out of these, which one do you think would be some of the most slippery? I recommend maybe the soap based material or vegetable oil. Mm -hmm. This is a polymer, by the way. What is polymer? Polymer is uh, a, a chemical. No, don't, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan and I actually met when I came in to do a chemistry test for Proving Ground, um, which is the show that we ended up doing on G4. So does that machine check flavor? You, you must be kidding. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's good. He just was the most interesting person to talk to. Like every once in a while I would make a comment about something we were doing or where we were going and he knew so much stuff about it. I'm like, How, where did that come from? Yeah, when we first met Ryan, he sold himself as uh, I'm a pro BMX rider, I'm a race car driver, I'm a uh, scientist, oh man, everything you could imagine. I believe Ryan Dunn knows what he's doing because he told me he studies physics. <laughs> <laughs> he's serious. He told us that, he's serious. He could hold a conversation about anything. He'd bullshit his way through it probably, but he actually did have certain, he had a lot of knowledge up there. It didn't matter if I was talking about synthetic organic chemistry or you know process engineering, anything like that. Ryan knew something about it. And not only that, he probably had a company devoted to that particular 
expertise. Ryan was quite the entrepreneur. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how many companies he really had, but he definitely had a lot of business cards. Whether it was automotive design, wastewater reclamation, aerospace welding, exfoliating lotions for hands, RD design, RD motor and RD financial solutions. He was telling me that he uh, worked for some government agency that was had a aliens in captivity. And in fact, it was some of his connections, though, that really got us hooked up with the argon that we used for one of my favorite skits that we ever filmed, the, uh, the chemical spill skit. Argon is an inert gas that kills oxygen, but it's really cool when it's in liquid form because it looks like mercury and sprays everywhere. Ryan hooked that up. I don't know where the hell he got to do her. I don't know how we got liquid argon. All right, I'll be back. Good luck. Don't drop it. And I don't know how we didn't suffocate in the van, but... You know, that was that was a lot of fun. Holy! Oh! 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 Speaking of Ryan Dunn's uh, business opportunities, the car stereo thing was one of them, and uh, that led to a, a pretty horrific day. A kid from school lent him his Volkswagen Jetta so he could drive to the mall, buy a stereo system to hook it up, and he invited me my brother and Chris Rab to go with him. So we're driving there and Rab's screaming in the back, just chaos. We got like, you know, whoever playing on the radio just cranked, having the time of life. And I'm speeding because I'm a punk kid. He's driving like 110 miles an hour to the point where Rab grabs my seatbelt and buckles me in. 10 seconds later, we flip eight times in oncoming traffic. Like not like a roll, it was like front to back to front to back. The car flips opens up the passenger door, just flies out in the center median over the oncoming traffic. Yeah, Ryan was all bloody and they found me in the trees and um, Bam broke the window with his head. Rab was totally fine. My part of the car, like nothing had happened to it at all and I just kind of got out and was just confused and look at everybody's in just in panic and there's cars like skidding out, getting out, couldn't believe any of us were alive, let alone all of us. It was just the worst time my entire life. And um, to this day, like, I hate talking to April, Bam's mom, about it because she hated me. And to this day, she probably still has a little bit of hate in her for that accident right there. And I don't blame her because it was horrible. Stupid kids do stupid things. I was pretty much terrified to ever get in a car with him. And, you know, I agreed to do the gumball rally with him, which was around the world in eight days. Whenever Dunn was driving, I was seriously so terrified that after like the third day, I was like, Dunn, you, you seriously need to stop at a sex shop and buy me a butt plug because I'm going to crap myself. <laughs> this is the new race car. Uh, we're prepping it now for this year's 12-hour endurance race, and hopefully we won't be landing in fifth or fourth or third. We'll be landing in first, or else I'd be very upset. He is a good race car driver. He did do a race in West Virginia, and he got first place. I don't even know how many cars he had, but he was so into it. He would just, you know, buy these crazy fast cars, take them all apart, put them all back together again, customize them. He was way into it. Full-blown gearhead. You know, started from skateboards to bicycles to, you know, eventually cars. But anything could get him moving a little faster intrigued him. What do you think is happening here with this one? Go check his oil. How he about this? blew it up again. Don't buy a car made by Dolce & Gabbana and you'll be fine. <laughs> 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 When we finished Jackass 2, the very ending of the movie, Dunn and I were attached um, with ropes around our feet, and a horse was going to come by full speed and just rip us out. Tell me you f***ing slapped that horse. Okay, not okay. Yeah, I'm all right. No, I'm fine. I've got this broken. I'm just going to Myself. Dunn landed really wrong and messed his shoulder up and wound up getting a blood clot. It was really scary. It was scary to all of us because, you know, we don't think about that stuff. And then, you know, blood clot is really dangerous because if a chunk of that went into his heart or into his brain, he would die. I've never seen a man more scared in my life. I mean, that was, they literally took him from a checkup at his physician straight to the hospital and told him, hey, man, you could die any minute, you know. And it was, they, he, 
he had the fear of God put in him. It was pretty dire. I mean, like what was going on with him. So he had to be on all kinds of, um, I think, um, you know, these clot busting drugs and, and things like that. And it really kind of put him into a, a funk. Rolling. Jackass two behind the scenes, take three. You got it done. Almost done. Ugh. Um, I sense the excitement. What? I sense the excitement. I'm, I'm on medication. The last thing I didn't can be thinking about right now is it. Are you hurting? Oh God, you don't even understand. Are you fucking, sick? Yeah. I got blood clot, nerve damage. All because of this garbage, so shoot. I just put two needles in my body. That was fun. Gotta go do some more. So let's shoot. Do this interview. <laughs> so not only did he have this blood clot, but he had Lyme disease. That That's something that sort of just makes you miserable, takes all your energy out. And he went from this, you know, fearless immortal to a, a guy that was giving himself shots every day just to remain upright. Being frightened and hurt, he's kind of withdrew into, it, well, at least away from us. You know, he wasn't there for 24-hour takeover or 2.5, and I didn't like him not being around. None of us did. He went in, like, this really dark place for two years, and, uh, you know, didn't want to be on film anymore, didn't think that he was funny. Even with, with us guys that, you know, lived down the street or lived with him or, you know, saw him every day, he, he I guess he became kind of a recluse. I remember going to a Chinese restaurant and we came walking out and fans were running up to him and saying, you know, you, you're Ryan Dunn from Jackass. And it's the only time I ever saw in all the years that he was involved in anything. He said, no, I get that a lot. What especially moved me at the time, and even more so now, is just the way he talked about Angie, his, his girlfriend of 10 years, and how she stayed, stuck through and through all that, and how he was sort of amazing, you know, in his sort of classic Ryan self-deprecating way, he would just, you know, he's like, what is a woman like that doing with a piece of shit like me? I don't know, but just so grateful that she was in his life. That's the one thing that I know that if, they're, if, if Ryan's thinking of anything, that's the main thing he's thinking is how much, how much he misses Angie. She's just so strong and she's funny and she's beautiful and she got Ryan and she thought she was, he was sexy with that disgusting beard. That's Angie, your girlfriend's no, face? Yeah. She made a stupid face and I took a photo, so when she was out of town, I got a tattoo. Oh, my God. Angie is beautiful, but that <laughs> picture really doesn't do her justice. No. no. <laughs> when he introduced Angie and I was like... What? How the f*** did this guy get this chick? And then I was like, well, all right, so he's famous and he's on TV. And then he's like, no, no, this was even before, yeah. before yeah. Jackass. Yeah. We had a lot of questions about that. That kind of blew our minds. I, I, I still, I still can't believe no. it. No, but he's a harassing. handsome guy, he's, you know. He's very handsome. He's very handsome, but he, did, he was always talking about how small his little penis yeah. was, though. What did he yeah. say? He said it looked. He like... once referred to yeah. uh, his penis as a a button in a fur coat, <laughs> <laughs> which we and loved so much that we wrote that into our television show. It sucks. With with done gone, I think I now have the smallest penis on the Jackass cast. So Ryan had completely disappeared from us. You know, I hadn't talked to him in two years. And then in spring of 2009, uh, we went to Bam's house to shoot for Nitro Circus. Ryan, I guess, had been just coming out of his cave a little bit. And uh, we filmed with him, and it was just like not a, nothing had ever changed. You know, it was just awesome. Shortly after that, we decided to do uh, Jackass 3. You know, you could just see that he had come out of the fog, you know, it just... And it was so clear and so fun to be around. Uh, I didn't want to do it at all, but once we started filming, I realized uh, immediately that uh, I was wrong. It was a, it was an awesome experience. It, it actually had more fun on this than I did on all previous endeavors we had had. Uh, I laughed from beginning to end. I really did. And now I have new friendships because I really didn't like anybody. And now I like a good 20%. Who would have thought? You're not in that. He went through that dark period, and he came out of it, and 
Yeah, and he was brilliant in the third one. He was a brilliant friend. The last couple of years, like, he's been, I think, just in a place where, you know, he was just really peaceful. I think he and Angie just were doing great. And, I mean, like, he just really found out who he was. I love it here. I don't know about you guys. I am happy. A happy done. This is, is happy me happy. Everybody. I like happy done. I did. If you guys weren't here, I'd be supremely happy. <laughs> and that's the weirdest thing. Like, people said to me, like, he was in such a good place that he was, like, almost ready to go or something, which, I mean, the guy's 34 years old, so that sounds stupid, but, I mean, he just seemed, like, very happy and satisfied with what he's done, and uh, for good reason, you know? That was one of the hardest things for me or is one of the hardest things for me to accept is that on one hand that makes me happy to know that he was happy but on the other hand it's like you know why did it have to be so short a mangled mess is all that is left of ryan dunn's car after an early morning accident on route 322 and pottstown pike there was some pretty high speed involved in this the vehicle missed a turn hit a guardrail and went airborne and went through several trees, some sizable. So there was a very vicious collision involved in this thing. And now, friends and family are left stunned at how everything changed in a split second. There are stars so distant The light that left them ages ago just came into view That twinkling we're seeing now Maybe There's been rumors before on the internet about some of the cast dying or something, so I I, I didn't think it was real. That's the way I was in shock. I I didn't believe it. You know, I'm still it still doesn't feel real. I don't know if it's ever gonna really completely sink in. Part of me doesn't want it to, but just so we know. I guess that's the way it's got to be. We've been doing this for so long, you know, like we're a family. God lets the light out, live the star. You know, to think that that's it. And you know, we're not going to see him again. I wish he wouldn't always drive so fast. And he always did. I wish he wasn't drinking that night, too, you know? We lost him and Zach. You know, Zach Hartwell was also in that car. Sometimes when you have a larger-than-life personality who is in an accident, you only hear about the one person, but he was just such a happy guy. Always that upbeat person. Ryan introduced us to Zach when we were um, filming number two. He was this gnarly military man, and then also just a fun, loving guy that could hang with a bunch of jackasses, you know? God lets the light out, live the star. There's such a hole in the family now. Jackass is really, it's never gonna be the same. It's the worst thing ever. So many people around the world reached out, flooded our site, you know, and they still do about Ryan. It was really sweet what the Kings of Leon guys did. Huge banners behind the stage and dedicated the song to him. It's for our good friend Ryan, rest in peace. I just hope Ryan would be remembered, not for, for some of the crazy things he did or shoving a car up his ass or, you know, or, or, uh, the fact he liked to drive fast. I hope he's remembered as the sum of all those things, is that he he did all of them with passion. And, he lived life. He yeah. knew how to live life. He was such a good person, and I think he, uh, I think, you know, made, made me a little better person just knowing him. 
uh, that rubs off, <laughs> you know? Let me just say there is a cranium that overflows with wasted images of the way back. Useless figures were kept in touch. Clean up the mess and wear You can start with yours through the I'm Ryan Dunn, and I'm gonna just, 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 let's just do it. This water is roughly about 32 degrees. I'm Ryan Dunn, and I'm gonna jump in it for your entertainment. You're watching Jackass. Oh God, it's cold. Dude, you got this. Nelson. <laughs> Nelson. <laughs> Oh, oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Tip that, dude. Great job, man.